What's up, guys? Today, I'd like to talk to you about something very near and dear to my heart, 1959 Fender Stratocasters. So I've done several videos in the past discussing uh, 1959 Strats and 1959, just that number and the year guitar. You had so many uh, just amazing, amazing guitars being built. I mean, the Les Paul is one of the most iconic uh, guitars ever and it'll go down in history as one of the most iconic guitars ever and you know even Les Paul Jr's you know everybody wants that 59 neck shape it seems that in 1959 it was a real pivotal time for all manufacturers you know including Gibson including Fender across the board everybody was trying to be innovative everybody tried to have new items new products and new designs ready for the NAMM show that they held yearly and regarding the Stratocaster you know I, I truly feel like the Stratocaster was Leo Fender's uh, opus. It was his masterpiece compared to the Tele. With the inception of the Stratocaster in 54, um, this is a 57, but in 54 you would have had something similar to this. You would have seen an ash body though. Uh, still a maple neck, three pickups, two tone functions. You have two tone functions here, a volume function, a three-way switch, and this amazing tremolo synchronized tremolo system that was designed you know really really uh adding almost making a hot rod to the telecaster you know the telecaster was a slab body shape no contours this the stratocaster now had contours it had a shape it looked like you know i've heard some people compare it to say it was a spaceship it looked like a woman it had beautiful shape but in 54, this was very groundbreaking, and there were a lot of people, including Gibson, who kind of laughed at the Stratocaster and said, what are you going to do with that? And as we know, some of our heroes uh, have shaped the, the music business with the Stratocaster in hand. It's an amazing tip of the hat to Leo Fender in trying to be innovative and trying to uh, push the boundaries and be creative all while thinking up a design like this tremolo system and making it work. It was just incredible how somebody had to sit there and figure that out. And there are, there's a 53 prototype, I believe. I may be wrong if somebody wants to correct me down below. I, I believe that there's a 53 prototype with some pictures out there and the tremolo system was quite different than it is now. So it did come a long way and it shows that Leo Fender and team were constantly trying to improve and tr trying to make a product better. So, uh, like I said, this is a 57, but this is what a 54 Strat somewhat would have looked like. All this wear here, how the the finish just gets easily worn through from playing. Um, to 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 Leo Fender especially, uh, that was an eyesore. And, um, you know, really, if, if you think about his way of thinking, once the frets wore out, his way of thinking was just put another neck on there. And as he started, you know, seeing the wear happen on the fretboard, you know, it, it was kind of a, like I said, it looked, it just looked dirty to him. I've read in some articles where he said the guitar looked dirty and he wanted to find something to do with it. He wanted a more uh, cleaner, fancy looking product. So in late 58, early 59, the Fender Jazzmaster, you see here pictured behind me, started featuring a rosewood neck. They used Brazilian slab rosewood. Now the best way to explain a slab versus veneer is Think of the top of a neck where you would fret. Now cut that fretboard off flat, straight, all the way. And you glue a slab of Brazilian to it. Veneer board, the maple neck would be radiused to the seven and a quarter radius. And then a radiused slab of Brazilian rose would be laid on that. So that's the difference between slab and uh veneer board. And you can see those, they're easily uh, detected right at the heel. Leo decided to apply this to the Stratocaster and the Telecaster. But the Stratocaster now came out looking something like this. You have still 21 frets. You have a little different neck shape now. Now, I don't know if that has something to do with them factoring in laying on a slab or not. But the neck, neck shape kind of transforms to a, a, a slim D taper. And 59 necks are known for being super fast. Uh, one indication of a slab board is the curvature right here uh, before the nut. That's that's a, a telltale sign. At 59, they also switch to a three-ply guard, a three-ply three cellulose pit guard. Still with your two-tone shaping capabilities. 
still with your volume, your three-way switch. And I believe that a lot of these pickups were carried over from the 50s. Uh, they didn't really design new pickups for 1959. 59 Strats are extremely cool in, in a way where they have a lot of maple neck Strat qualities. And they also have that warmth and that girth of this now rosewood fingerboard. And to some people that may not that may not be a big thing and that may not make sense, but but playing off of the board with a different material wood, where the frets are pressed in, where the notes are, are expressing from, it does have a difference, it does have a change in sound. In a future video, I'm gonna do a maple neck versus rosewood vintage guitar. Just straight up see what we can hear for differences. But regarding the 59s and what attracts me to them, it's they're real, they really have this comfortability, they, they, their neck, there is no kind of bulkiness, no odd shape. It almost seems like in 59 and early 60, every neck was, it had the shape. When you put your hand on it, you can, you can easily say, yeah, it's a 59, 60 neck to me. Now, there are other people out there that know way more than me, and I am not afraid to accept that, and I'm not afraid to give them praise. But from my experience and owning many around that year, 59, 60, I have a 1950, uh, 1960 Jazzmaster, same thing. I had a 1959 Tele, same thing. I wish I kept that one. Uh, many 1960 Strats, same shape. Early 1960 and 59 have just that slim, fast D shape. And there were a few subscribers on here that I've met in person and I've had my guitar with me and they've played it. And they said the same thing. Wow, the neck is so comfortable and, and quick. It just really... It, ju it just allows uh, it allows you to move around with, with no restraints. You know, so you could get the 59 Strats in custom colors, uh, white, red, Fiesta red. Now, all th there are many other colors too, but also you'll see a lot of, you'll see very few of them in blonde. Blonde was a custom color only used on ash bodies. And you're gonna see here from one of my friends in a little bit, uh, ultra rare and highly desirable, beautiful looking, uh, blonde over ash but 59 strats just have a thing man they have a real resonance the to me the body contours are still thin thinner like the maple necks uh, the necks are quick the pickups have a real chime to them you don't get a lot of excess uh, you know grit from the pickups there's not a lot of extra uh, bass and woofiness they're very clear crystalline and I just I love these guitars as you can hear how resonant they are too. So I know I kept you guys waiting a little bit on this guitar. Uh, I was posting some videos and doing some playing with it and everybody started asking. This guitar popped into my life out of nowhere and it was almost as a, <clears throat> it was almost like a gun to your head had to make a decision quick. Uh, I, the gentleman that I bought this guitar from, I had been in contact with him earlier on in the year about a fuzz face he had for sale and that deal didn't pan out uh and then i saw him list this i saw this on gbase and uh this came up the price he was asking was uh this is a refin by the way i want to i want to be clear about this this is not a custom color white this is a refin 59 but the reason it uh the reason why i was attracted to this guitar it's a refin only i took the original frets out of this guitar i've refretted it uh, but it was a refin only, preserved body dates, preserved cavities, all of the sunburst is still in the cavities, not painted over, not a sloppy job, pots, switch, everything is legit. The pit guard was changed because the original, as they do, as the celluloid pit guards did, they shrunk heavily. And over the years, you take these pit guards off to change a volume pot, or you take the pit guard off to even spray the pots out. If you leave it off too long, you'll find that you have some trouble screwing the old pit guards back on. Uh, I do have a pit guard in the works. You know, that'll put this guitar complete. Do I consider it player grade? I don't know. The guitar hasn't had any breaks or repairs. Uh, it's just been refinished. It's a really, really great guitar. So what kind of happened was I saw this guitar right as I was finishing the 66 Tele. I got the 66 Tele complete and I was excited about it. And right away, you know, when a 59 Strat pops up, I have a lot of friends who send me 59s because I am such a sucker for a 59 Strat. So I spotted this guitar and I started looking at that Tele and I said, I've always wanted one of these Tellies, but what's gonna bring me more joy? You know, I wanted to find a twin to my Sunburst one 
and I've played a few and the few that I've played in this date range with this pot date uh, which is uh, the 20th week of 59 which is they're super early you know and no fishy business there they kind of just use stuff out of a bin but anyways I just I had a feeling about this guitar so I hustled I started putting it out there to some friends hey I might sell a 66 telly and I sold it at a, a cheap price you know an honest price for what it was it was a refin 66 telly refret refin redecal and it was fair I found somebody who they just texted me yesterday and said this is a bucket list guitar thank you so much so I'm glad I could put that in the hands of somebody that wanted it and I had that money come in and I, I had to make something happen I contacted the seller of this guitar we made a deal I told him to give me a few minutes to sort it out I listed a couple of pedals a couple of things I had around some Diaz pedals that I didn't really want to get rid of but there comes a point where you're a little gluttonous I can have 12 Diaz fuzz, fit, fuzz pedals uh, you know and I'm only playing one at a time so I picked some that I could sell I was able to sell those and I was able to hammer out the deal with this guy this guitar is extremely inspiring and it is so eerily close to my other 59 it's incredible the pickups in the sunburst strat are on the low side but that's just how they were they've never been rewound just remagnetized um, you'll see later on in this video that somebody who's going to join us has similar specs in his pickups. My bridge pickup on this guitar, on the Sunburst guitar, is only 4.9K. Uh, I've been told it's probably gonna break somewhere or something like that, but it works and it sounds huge. This guitar, they're all mid fives. This is uh, like 5.5, five, 5.7, five, five, seven, five, seven, I believe. And the guitar is just chimey, it's clear, it's clean, no added gain. Uh, I've refretted it with 57110 jumbo wire and on all of my strats I changed the tuners because the you know spinning those old tuners you're gonna wear them out so I just put them aside in the box and um, you know I can I can use these and beat on these these are a, a new reissue age tuner they look the part they do it well and they hold tuning great no issues we have some wear on the back of the neck which is really really cool you can see the sunlight getting in there it's definitely a glazed over but raw wood feel which is comfortable like I said uh, the body date is preserved back there I can I can show it to you in a little bit but other than that this guitar is all there 1959 strap so to have the two of these and uh, you know have them be so close to one another it's just uh, I feel I feel very grateful the serial numbers are this one's four five and this one's 4-2 so they are close they're in the neighborhood and you know granted they were grabbing these serial number plates out of bins and installing them so uh, you can't really go by that fully but yeah man I'm just uh, I'm in love with 59 strats I know it sounds funny it sounds maybe foolish to some people but 59 is just my year I know Mike McCready from Pearl Jam is a big fan of 59 I got to see Mike's guitar up close and I'm a member of the 10 club I've seen Pearl Jam you know 20 30 times uh, I love Pearl Jam and, and and Mike especially you know with a 59 Strat I just feel like this uh, this connection you know what I mean because he's a 59 fan and I just love 59 guitars I have a Les Paul Jr. I may have something else coming uh, 59's are just great man it's that year it's right before 60 it's still the 50's but you have this really new new wave inventive kind of thing Leo Fender was doing with this slab rosewood being a 59 junkie and being a 59 fan I've made friends with people who have 59 strats and you know it's a real geeky kind of thing because 59 you have to think that was the year that you could get a maple neck strat and a rosewood strat that was one year where the stratocasters you could get two different models pretty pretty cool and uh, I yeah I've just made friends over the years with people who have 59s and they're gonna chime in in this video with their 59 strats and tell us a little bit about them um, I just you know, it's kind of like a brotherhood in a way. When uh, somebody else has a 59, you kind of instantly know. Uh, they know about that unique neck. They know about those those really clean, clear pickups. They know about those guitars. And they were still, you know, Fender and 59 when they were making these slab board Stratocasters and Jazzmasters and even Telecasters. They were still figuring it out. So 
kudos to Fender and kudos to my buddies who chimed in on this video. I'm gonna send it over to them and have you guys check out their great guitars. Also, but, there's some great books out there that really focus on Fender around this time because it was a big change and it was something new. It was competition, it was stretching the boundaries, it was designing something new, and uh, it paid off to me, I feel. Yeah. So a few books I want to uh, mention is this uh, Fender, The Inside Story. This is uh, by Forrest White. This is Leo Fender's uh, right-hand man, and they really, really discuss what was happening in 59 and the conversion over to the Rosewood Next. It's a great book to have, and this is a real good book with some inside stories about what was going on in the Fender factory back then. Fender, The Sound Heard Around the World, uh, written by Richard Smith. This is a great book. Uh, comes with a, a DVD with a video inside the Fender factory way back then. Also discussing models, different models, and the 59 era, the transition, amps, telecasters, prototypes, whatever you want to see, it's right here. It's a great book. And this one, The Coup de Gras, Fender, The Golden Age. Uh, one of the authors on here, Terry Foster, I've become friendly with him, and he's helped me with a lot of uh, purchases. Uh, it's helped me with a lot of advice and info about uh, different models. Terry's a great guy, wealth of knowledge. He's a collector and he's a historian. Uh, and this book is really, this book is incredibly valuable because it really goes into every model and breaks it down and gives you the history. Definitely discussing 59 here, the con conversion over to the, to the slab board, uh, fretboard. But just uh, incredible knowledge in here. Tons of pictures in here, tons of photos, tons of history, and it's all factual. So big kudos to Martin Kelly, Terry Foster. I've gotten to chat with those guys. Uh, you need to get this book. This is available on Amazon, and this book is incredible. This is the one right here. Shameless plug, but uh, if you're into these kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. So guys, again, I will be doing more videos playing the white one, maybe versus the rosewood and then the the slab board versus the maple neck the guitar you're hearing in the intro was the white guitar uh, it's just got a really chimey uh classic stratocaster sound but check out these videos from my buddies i appreciate all of you guys you guys are like brothers to me and uh i'm just glad that i could get your guitars showcased on the channel we could all check them out and i hope you guys enjoy Peace. Hey everybody, Matthew here, and today Nick has asked me to uh, speak to you guys about 1959 Stratocasters and how I came into mine and what makes them special in my opinion. And uh, I know there's going to be a lot of other very cool people talking about their guitars, some of which I've had the great pleasure to play. But um, honestly, I was never in the market for a 59 Stratocaster. It wasn't like I was searching for one for whatever reason. I did want a Sunburst, an original Sunburst Stratocaster of some kind. Really, um, you know, like Stevie's 63 Strat, that's really what I was looking for. But uh, I came across this guitar one day for sale and it was spray painted silver. It had a couple missing parts. Some of the parts were in the case, uh, which was original, but I could tell what it was. It was basically listed as a, you know, rosewood board vintage Stratocaster. It was priced way too high. And over, the about, over about a year, I just kind of waited and watched and um, finally got the guitar for a, a pretty good price. And then I stripped all of that spray paint off, which ultimately left what you see here. And so now I've got my own 59 Stratocaster with the original kind of two-tone burst, which uh, I guess that's a segue into... Uh, what makes the 1959 Stratocaster special? And I would say there's there's a number of unique features about this model. For one, 1959 was kind of a pivotal year for both Gibson and Fender. Of course, there's the 59 Burst and 335s, which are some of the you know greatest guitars ever made. And then in 1959, Fender went to the slab board necks on their uh, Strats and Telecasters. So that was a, a major uh, change in the construction and the sound of the guitars. But some, some unique features that are special about 59s, I think. The 50 Stratocaster pickups uh, have a very unique sound. They did change into the 60s. And um, I think 
some of the greatest tones I've ever heard come from 50 Stratocasters. Uh, this guitar specifically is also super light, which is a characteristic of a lot of 50s guitars. Of course, there's some outliers, but many that I've uh, played or owned um, were extremely light. This weighs close to seven pounds, fully loaded. And then also what's cool about 5960 Stratocasters in Sunburst is that the red dye that they used for you know this uh, other layer of the Sunburst, uh, much like the um, Les Pauls of the time period, the red dye would fade away very quickly and then it turns into just this two-tone burst. So a lot of 59 and, and 1960 guitars have this exact look. On the back, there's a little bit more red, but really on this guitar, it's it's very much faded as well. So I think it's a, a really unique look that you're only gonna get for about a year period. And then of course, with um, the Fender Stratocaster, you're only gonna have about a two and a half year, three year window of you know the slab board and some of these real early slabs were were very thick and i think it changes the feel and the sound of the guitar for me it sounds um a little more uh bassier a little thicker sound and i think the neck itself just just the feel of the neck um it kind of has a little bit more flex to it unlike uh the maple necks they they seem really hard and solid they don't really um, flex at all when you're bending and stuff. And I think the the veneer boards are kind of similar in feel because there's more, there's a, there's a little bit more maple to those necks. Now I've, I've played some veneer board Stratocasters that play absolutely wonderful and, uh, and I, I even preferred some of them. But uh, for whatever reason, this guitar just does it for me. And this is my number one and uh, it always will be. I think it's the greatest sounding Stratocaster I've ever came across. Uh, I have played some that uh, are are very good playing guitars and, and definitely uh, rival this one in terms of playability. But as far as sound goes, I think this is the best one that I've ever played. Uh, one final note that uh, I think is worth mentioning, because I am a, a huge Stevie Ray Vaughan fan, uh, Stevie was convinced that the pickups in his guitar were 1959 pickups, and that's very much debated, and really it doesn't even make any sense how that would have come to be, but uh, nonetheless, it, there's, there's some interviews online where Stevie actually talks about um, his guitar being a 1959 Stratocaster, so uh, he thought it was, so uh, what does it matter? But uh, just that connection is, is kind of cool to me. Since I didn't end up uh, with a 63 like his, uh, I guess the next best thing is what he thought his was, which was in 1959. But anyways, big thanks to Nick for allowing me to uh, make a little short video. And uh, thanks to everyone else who um, was a part of this. Really uh, very special and, and glad to be in, in great company here. So. Thanks a lot. Uh, my name is Sean Ridley, and I was asked by my friend Nick Savigny to talk a little bit about my 1959 Fender Stratocaster. 59 was the first year that Fender started using rosewood uh, fretboards on their Stratocasters. And from 1959, uh, some period 1959 until 1962, they used what's referred to as slab Brazilian rosewood. You can see how much thinner and straighter that line is. This is a, a veneer, a much thinner veneer rosewood fretboard. This is the slab rosewood. Um, the reason that Fender switched to rosewood uh, in 1959 was primarily cosmetic concerns because I'm gonna walk over here and, and show you a 57. This is a Strat from 1957. And you can see in the cowboy country here where there's wear on the fretboard and Leo Fender hated the look of a worn fretboard. So did some of the players during that day. And Leo assumed that, you know, if this fretboard got worn, that players would just unbolt it and get another neck and put it on there. And as we know now, that's, <laughs> these necks are really valuable. So a main reason for switching over was really cosmetic, just because Leo and some of the players didn't like the way the wear looked on the neck, which I love. Some other distinguishing characteristics are the, the screw in between the neck and middle pickup, as you see in 59, was in the middle. In 63, I think in 62, it was moved closer to the middle pickup, and it stayed there for many years following. Um, in 59, some Stratocasters were still made with maple necks. Some were made with rosewood, and the pickguards 
Uh, some had nine holes, some had 10 holes, which are very rare. And this one has 11. Um, you can see it's a nitrocellulose um, pickguard as they would use for several years thereafter until about 66 or 65. It has a crack, which is very common because these things shrink. Clay dots, it has a beautiful original spaghetti logo. Um, you'll see that the the color is is kind of a unique color for a Strat. In 59, they were trying to make three-tone sunburst, but the red would fade when it was exposed to sunlight and it would turn into a two-tone. Two Here's the three-tone, which you see in later 60s, they finally perfected it. And this was the, the tone that they were using before in, in the earlier 50s. So you can see, even though these guitars were all made within five or six years of each other, the finishes are somewhat different. It's been played and loved, and I play it. Um, sounds wonderful. I can post a vid later, some honest wear on the back of the neck. It's got Clusen single line tuners. Just a really fine example of a, of a 59 strap. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. 1959 Stratocaster in factory finish blonde over ash. The unique features of the 59s, they have often white pickups. This is all original. Three-way switch. Really black Brazilian slab board. What's fun about it, it's a hardtail. It's what is cool, kind of direct connection to your hand. Also, um, it can make the guitar a little bit lighter. This particular guitar is um, right at six and a half pounds. So to get a Ash guitar instead of Alder, um, it would have to be in blonde, not Olympic white, but blonde. So you see the wood grain underneath the guitar. A lot of original wear, a lot of wear. Um, I've added a ton to this. I've had it for a few years and I play this guitar every day. I, I play it in a band. One of the fun facts is this was Clifford Antones. So it was the house guitar at Antones. So I have pictures of Stevie playing it, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I'm sure a host of others, I've heard everybody's played it. It was, you know, being the house guitar, you know, you were to go to Antones in the 80s, you played a Stratocaster. This would be on the wall for you to grab. Um, like I said, it's really light. It's got, you know, the typical 1959 race car style neck. You know, it's pretty fast. Um, this guitar came with 6100s in it. Um, I have it freshly refretted a year ago with 6100s. Um, the guitar plays great with 6100s. Um, I, you know, this is a, a main guitar for me. So, um, you know, I, I've replaced the tuners. I have the original factory tuners in the case. And, um, but since I change strings daily, um, these are a better choice for me. There's really no pretty sounds in this guitar. It's a very mid-rangey guitar. Um, I have others and have had many Stratocasters that sound beautiful like Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits. This isn't one of those. This is a very mid-range rock guitar and, um, and it's loud, so. <laughs> You know, middle, neck, Tracy Farmer, my 1959 Stratocaster, hardtail, factory blonde finish. There she is.
December 59, 40376. Alder body, obviously a slab, rosewood. I bought this guitar in 2008. And from Austin Vintage Guitar and Steve Fulton, the owner, told me that a guy came in off the street, sold it for cash. It had been painted poorly with some house paint. He had professionally refinished in the early 2000s. I think I first saw this in 2003. A uh, few modifications I've done to it. Um, stainless frets, replaced the tuners. The originals were not in good shape. They would drop tunings and stuff. And, um, the volume pot and I believe this tone pot have gone bad. This wore out from just doing too many volume swells. Um, and there's a five way switch on it. Yeah, I guess, man, I'll tell you my favorite thing about this guitar is that, you know, not every vintage Strat is great. Bridge pickup has been rewound. It died one time on a tour. One of the few times in my adult life that I've cried but actually, uh, I think it was Fralin rewound it a little hot, and I actually like it better, but don't tell anybody. Uh, one thing specifically about this Strat is that the neck pickup reads about 4.9. It's very low output, but it sounds absolutely incredible. So, there she is. All right, love you, Nick. Guys, Talk to you later. Uh, I was literally filming something else. FedEx just showed up, so this is really cool. I want to get this open on video. This motherfucker. Okay. You'll be seeing this the minute I do. Oh, damn.